Hey everybody, how are we all doing? I hope we're all well. Check him out. Uh, hopefully you've seen the video where I've converted this up, but this is the the new chaplain uh, from Games Workshop, the Terminator chaplain that uh, they sent out, and I did a video a few days ago about how I've converted him up. He's converted up for my Dark Pharons chapter, which is a custom chapter um, made by me. It's kind of like my own custom idea uh, to try to get myself to get excited about space marines a little bit <laughs> so it's it's almost like if you think about it too much it's like a, almost like a chaos space marine <laughs> space marine chapter um but uh, yeah they are uh historically possibly rumored to be in a dark possession uh it's it's based around the same idea as the um blood angels fall into the black rage kind of thing so they've fallen to this weird dark possession which may or may not be like psychosis or something and uh, it's uh um, it shows off um, with these wisps that are all over their armour and things, so the, the, the armour just kind of deteriorates into uh, a different colour, uh, which I think is quite cool, and it's quite fun to paint. However, we are painting a chaplain, and chaplains are always have to be black. Now, the chaplain that you saw on screen, uh, which was painted, unfortunately didn't have his shoulder pad on, because um, um, he was... Uh, I decided to change one of the shoulder pads and ripped it off. Um, he had a really cool cloak, which... Um, allows you to have a little bit more colour on the chaplain uh, but this one um, I, I, I tried to add a little I tried to add a little bit more colour and interest to it um, with the kind of the wispy cloak that's around the back um, and uh, it's it may or may not have worked but uh, there's certainly no turquoise on there but uh, yeah so all we're doing is we're going to um, add add a little bit of a, a highlight and a grey to the initial black primer. So we've had a black primer put down to uh, down on it. I, th I think it was black grey that was the initial kind of initial coat. Um, and then now we're going to put this uh, this kind of first highlight on. Now this is how I always put my airbrush paints in the airbrush. Uh, it just allows you to when you're doing this. It, a it allows you to be very pre precise and particular about how much. Um, paint and thinner you're kind of um, putting into the airbrush but also it allows you to mix the paint up thoroughly like if you're mixing the paint up outside of the airbrush like th this is all now mixed up there's no there's no um like coagulation or anything in the paints it's all nice and smooth and then when you put it in the if you, when you put it on the, in the airbrush it's it's, uh, it's it's really nice and smooth and it's, it sprays very very well so i i recommend Particularly if you're just starting airbrushing, um, get some of these little airbrush pots, uh, and then you can just pour it in there. You, you really don't need much sort of thing. Uh, you just put a couple of drops in, and then because it's stainless steel tin, it just wipes straight off. So it's really good. Uh, and that was, as you could see, it was probably a little bit more than 50/50, so uh, probably 60% thinner, 40% paint. Um, and we are spraying at around 25 psi. We're getting in nice and close, and we're just going to kind of hit some hot spots for all the little bits of grey um, uh, on the armor. Try and find some some highlights. I I always uh, highlight my models as if uh, so. If you look at the model straight on, then my light sources always come from camera right. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, that's a a little bit of uh, um, uh, an overlap from my photography days when I would always uh, do my portraits with the, with the light on the, on camera right as well. Um, so uh, it also kind of leans into being right-handed as well. Uh, so it's 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 good. So yeah, it's, all my highlights are always camera right, which makes makes things easy. And uh, yeah, so we're just kind of going in and we're just kind of catching every little every little surface which is facing onto the right-hand side. Uh, anything which is facing upwards, trying to leave. Uh, spots um, of shadow as well because one of the things that you do get with airbrushing is you get quite a quite a soft but light blend and one of the things that I probably should have done with this afterwards and I didn't do and uh, yeah if, if because you guys can take some more time <laughs> I would probably recommend it I would go back in now so now you've done those highlights go back in with the black turn the model upside down and then just reinforce the shadows a little bit um, because I think the shadows are a little bit uh, de-contrasted de on this one. I think the, the, the shadows end up being a little bit kind of dark grey rather than black, and I think it, it, it loses a little bit of contrast. So, uh, yeah, I would go back in, 
Um, if you've got a bit more time, uh, I would go back in and just reinforce those shadows. Now, this is a really simple way of masking off. You just kind of slide a uh, slide a piece of paper up between <laughs> between the uh, the arms and the torso. Uh, it's dead dead simple. Uh, anything else is um, kind of you can mask off just with the angle of the airbrush. Uh, and it's dark sea blue and then turquoise for that first highlight. I try and keep it nice and dark. Um, my all my dark fairgrounds tend to be uh, quite dark with with uh, very very kind of contrasty highlights so that's all that done uh, and then the wisps uh, exactly the same idea uh, we're just going to go off mask off underneath underneath the wisps and then this is corn red uh, which is going on um, i then do a, a very very quick like just at the tips i will throw on um, a little bit of Mephiston red as well, uh, but it's corn red uh, for the for the most part for this. Uh, and then this is the wisps which are coming off the armor, uh, and you can also just fade and blend it into the armor as well. So it looks like it's emanating from it. And then obviously the crozius as well, the screaming crozius. I do like that. It's probably my favorite thing in the model. But um, yeah, and there's Meph Mephiston red as well. So it's just uh, just reinforcing the the highlights. Um, don't, don't go too much on this because uh, I, you, you, I, I really try and keep that kind of the contrast and the um, and the, the darkness on this. So it's just um, just some select areas, nice and thin down. And then <laughs> one of the one of the things that I started putting on some of the characters are, are these kind of little like demonically possessed ghostly hands, which are kind of coming out of the floor to kind of grasp on and uh, and hold on to the. Um, uh, <laughs> to the legs of the models, uh, to the legs of the characters. Right now, very very quickly, I wanted to talk about uh, metallic. So, airbrushing metallic is really really easy and really really cool. Uh, it's one of the smoothest and best ways of getting a nice base coat on metallics. Uh, and this is just one color. So this is model air chrome, and then you'll see. I did a very very thin coat to start with. Uh, which ended up being quite dark and then you can reinforce that uh, camera right light source and just kind of hit that top spot of the uh, of the helmet um, over and over again just kind of very very slowly build it up build it up build it up and then you can see how much brighter it is compared to the very uh, thin coat and that's just one color so you don't don't particularly need to on particularly on things like helmets and shoulder pads and things like that you don't need to go up through the metallics uh, as much as you would think so nice little tip there uh, nice and quick you can just use one metallic and just put it on a little bit thinner uh, if you're only if you're using it with the airbrush of course uh, it's a little bit more difficult if you're using it with a brush uh, <laughs> uh, okay so uh, the parchment the extra parchment that we added on uh, during the build video so this is xv88 uh, xv88 is my like is my go-to pretty much for all parchment skulls any kind of brown cloth thing uh, I use it absolutely all the time um, and what the way we're kind of adding this on and putting this on the parchment which we'll just sped it up there as well look at that super fast uh, you, you're painting it on in lines to keep the the texture and the the kind of the granularity and, and grain work of the parchment uh, trying to keep that in in line with them um, in in line with where the brush strokes are going um, and then obviously don't forget to do the top side as well because that's going to be uh, visible as well so that's going to be uh, highlighted up um, and all the all the brush strokes are going uh, horizontally and they are starting um, yeah, I mean you could do it the opposite way like technically you should be doing it the opposite way but because it's because there's an edge there the edge will kind of catch and absorb a little bit more of the uh, paint um, so like normally so normally when you're painting you would lift your brush off where you wanted the most paint so in theory these should these strokes should be going the other way but because I'm painting over the edge the edge kind of catches a little bit more of that paint so you can see that the edge is very very much brighter um, so yeah I'm, I'm uh, most of the time I'm, uh, I'm, I'm starting off the edge and kind of painting into it so the, the, the paintbrush catches that edge uh, just a little bit more prominently. So it's just a quicker way of painting um, things like this. I'm trying to do this one quite quickly. I had to try and get it painted for the for the article, which hopefully you've seen. It did get featured up in the Warhammer community page, which was quite cool. 
So x v eighty eight over all the parchments, nice and simple. And then we can uh, work on the other the other advantage of kind of doing those in uh, doing the the base coat and the highlights in those lines that are horizontal. It gives you just a little bit of a hint of maybe perhaps there are lots of lines of text on here because um, the text the text lines uh, when you when you get the text on on these little parchments it must be absolutely minute it must be absolutely tiny so any any kind of hint that you can put that uh, uh, that you can give that there's some text on here is is, is always going to be good you can obviously you can go in and you can put those little dots and dashes afterwards uh, i didn't on this one um again probably because i was rushing it a little bit but you can by all means just kind of go on and put those little dots and dashes to uh, to hint at the text but uh, i decided just to leave it at these kind of parchment lines and then we sped up uh, this bit as well uh, but i like the extra parchment uh, i would have really liked to have added another one on the other side and just kind of bulked it up even more i think that would look really really cool but um, I, could, I couldn't find one that fitted uh, the other side of the sister of the battle parchment just didn't quite fit but um, yeah, it looks cool. So yeah, this is uh, Carrick Stone, I think it is. So it's Carrick Stone and then uh, Screaming Skull. So it's XV88 Carrick Stone Screaming Skull. It's a nice kind of cold brown after you after you have the warm XV88 underneath it. Um, nice little option. Um, and because this is thinned down, so it's thinned down a little bit. Uh, if you build up. Um, in a couple of layers so you put one layer on and you, you do that a little bit kind of a little bit more heavy handed if you like so the brush marks are a little bit heavier um, and then the second coat the brush marks are a little bit lighter um, and therefore you're using the point of the brush a little bit more and you get um, a kind of a, a stronger striation a, a stronger brush mark and line uh, from the, using it nice and uh, lightly uh, now this is uh, Model Air Chrome, so we're going to go over and um, uh, none of my Dark Pharaohs have any gold on them. Uh, I don't know why. Um, in terms of the law, the reason why there isn't any gold on them in terms of anything else, any other reason is because I don't like painting gold. So, <laughs> so there's a nice and simple reason. Um, I don't know why I had gold on my Necrons. It's an absolute nightmare. Uh, but I do like painting silver, uh, as in like um, with metallic paints. True metallic, if you like. And uh, this is Model Air Chrome. Uh, it just gets painted on or on everything that we want silver, and then the whole model is going to get a big wash, so it's going to kind of get knocked back anyway. So we just kind of sit here and we very, 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 very carefully. Uh, Model Air Chrome is a lovely paint to paint on with a brush. Uh, it's a lovely paint to paint on with an with an airbrush as well. It doesn't really need any thinning. Um, I do thin it a little bit with my um, uh, when I'm brush painting on and uh yeah it's it really doesn't need much at all i would always try and add a little bit of water to metallics because you want to help them flow off the brush as smoothly and as frictionless as you can because as soon as you put friction on a brush that's using metallic paints then the metallic flex will cut the bristles so that's why when you're using metallic paints, the brushes don't last as long, basically. So I'd always try and add a little bit of water to metallic paints when I'm, when I'm using them. And then here's the crux, the crux Terminatus. The crux of the issue is that we're going <laughs> to... I'm sorry, that's really, that's really bad. Uh, so uh, yeah, just Crux Terminatus as well. Uh, I just put this one on uh, because I thought it looked really, really cool, but then I didn't realise that it uh, it went out of focus for half the half the painting. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the crux just, just look awesome, doesn't it? So... Uh, it looks very very good with uh, in silver everything being picked out um, just going around uh, picking out all the uh, little symbols and things on the uh, on the armor there's a lot of them actually more than I th more than I thought um, yeah it's interesting because obviously with the normal kind of chaplain color schemes that you'll see these will all be gold uh, and I think that would look good I think silver kind of does tend to blend in a little bit more than um, than than you would expect with the grey, uh, but uh, anyway, here we go. So this is uh, just remove a little bit of plastic from the uh, from, <laughs> from the painting pad. Uh, so this is the Winsor and Newton. This is lamp black. Uh, I, I love the Winsor and Newton oils. Uh, I'm trying to use a little bit more of these in terms of my army painting process. So the dark pharaons in particular are are very much my army painting project where I 
try and push myself to learn and speed up my painting process a little bit so the dark ferrons are great for that because like space marines you can paint space marines nice and quick so i try lots of things like this but this is um uh, yeah it's uh, winter and newton lamp black and then it's some um, uh odorless thinner this one's a bob ross one because hey if you want to paint really really well then use bob ross stuff uh and then it's a synthetic brush and uh, when you're mixing the oils just be aware so can you see as i'm mixing it around you can see blobs of the oil still there there's one at the bottom uh, it's now got mixed up uh, but as you're mixing these oils together the bits that the, the kind of the, the chunks of oils which don't mix in you can leave those unmixed while you're checking how thick or thin the washes they're like that so you touch it on the side and see how quickly it kind of f floods away and you can see uh, just uh, just through experience you'll, you'll figure out how thin you kind of want it and if it does need to be a little bit thicker then you can just kind of as i'm doing there just grab a couple more of the blobs of oil and just mix them in and force them back into the mixture and then it will th kind of thicken the mixture up a little bit um, uh, and then maybe if it needs to be even more thick then you can go and grab some more oil or if it needs to be a little bit more thin then you can stick some more thinner in there um, but uh, yeah so that's that and then all we're doing now is we're just going to absolutely flood the model just totally flood the model um, it has had a coat of gloss varnish so between the last step and this step it has had a close coat of gloss uh, bleh, 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 bleh. i will get my teeth in it has had a coat of gloss varnish uh and then all i'm doing is i'm just kind of going on i'm just 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 literally just kind of flooding the whole the whole area i'm trying to keep um some of the areas a little bit lighter um but generally the, the, so when i said earlier how uh, i felt it had lost a little bit of contrast i was trying to cheat a little bit with this and try and pull some of this oil and filter some of the darker shadows uh, a little bit with this oil wash uh, whether i was successful or not i will let you be this, decide that um but uh, yeah a lot of the darker shadowy areas um I, uh, I did try to kind of filter and darken them down a little bit so uh, I mean, you wouldn't need to if you if you went back and uh, kind of reinforced those shadows with some black paint um, uh, after you've done the airbrush and then you won't need to but uh, yeah so uh, as you can see they're just kind of dragging and trying to filter that uh, that dark side um, but yeah you just go all the way around the model you can see how quickly it is to uh, and how much fun it is as well it's it's such a kind of relaxing thing and, and a process to do you just sit there and uh, just touch and just watch the oil just run and capillary action all the way around where you want it to go um, so it's, it is very very cool uh, make sure you are using a synthetic brush because this will oils and thinners will absolutely ruin your sables so um, this is an old um and actually it's not an old synthetic brush i got uh, i got a pack of synthetic brushes from amazon for like four pounds or something 50 of them they're absolutely shocking brushes but they're fine for for gunking oil uh, all over things um and then clean out the dish i always try and keep your uh, painting table and desk uh, clean and uh, and tidy and just kind of keep on top and things like that uh, and then throw some uh, matte varnish over it uh, you have to make sure that the oil has dried and this was uh, i think this was literally left overnight so it's far far easier uh, to just kind of leave it and kind of come back to it once it is dry rather than forcing it with a hair uh, hair dryer or anything and uh, yeah throw some throw some matte varnish over it and that just kind of seals all the um, all the oils in and then we can go in and we're, we're just going to go around and pick out some edge highlights pick out some details pick out the rivets and everything this is uh, i think it was dark blue gray light blue gray uh, i can't remember what it said now um you'll be able to rewind and find it blue gray pale there we go that's what it was and uh, yeah so we're just going to go going around catching all the top edges uh, any surface any edge which is facing upwards uh, we're going to try and push uh, we could have used a slightly lighter color so you could have used something like white gray that would have been quite good fun as well um, but um, to be honest I, I don't think the contrast was quite high enough on the model anyway to kind of push the contrast any further on an edge highlight which is why I kind of went for this slightly more muted uh, edge highlight um, and also it's absolutely doing my head in but I really did not clean up 
the areas between the rivets enough. Um, it looks so bad. You can still see like the mould line and uh, that that I haven't quite cleaned up between those uh, between the rivets on the shoulder pads. So uh, please do that <laughs> when you're painting your models. Um, so yeah, just it's a nice and simple process, nice and kind of relaxing. Throw throw uh, throw a favourite Netflix um, uh, thing on. A lot of this kind of speed painting. I don't want to really say speed painting, but army painting with stages like this, where you airbrush and then you wash uh, and then kind of edge highlight is very. This is the kind of the relaxing painting, if you like. Like I enjoy. I enjoy painting for Golden Demon and for like display and things like that, but it's a different type of painting than than just kind of sitting back and this is very I don't want to say monotonous, but it's very repetitive and simple. Um, it just kind of practice your brush control, it helps you improve your brush control and things like that. Um, uh, there we go, blue grey pale is the final final highlight, and just kind of going back in and just reinforcing some of the hot spots. But yeah, this this kind of um just sort of turn your brain off painting is is uh, is is quite fun um and you'll notice when i'm doing these uh, kind of edge highlights i'm doing like a bit of a tippy tap and um, to, to try and show a bit of a broken highlight uh so just to hint that there might be a little bit of edge damage on the uh, on the edges here from from battle or something uh, and then obviously picking out the the lovely rivets which are all over this model all over them I couldn't decide actually. The leg armor has got the the trim around the leg armor, and I couldn't decide whether to paint that silver or paint it as black and then highlight it with the grey. Uh, ultimately, I went to highlight it with the grey mainly because I ran out of time and I'd already done the silver and the wash. Um, but maybe if I was doing it again, you you maybe I would paint it silver. I don't know actually. I haven't really decided. The only chaplain I'd done for my dark pharaons was that one that I'd converted from the Judicia, and obviously he's got a big turquoise uh, cape uh, cloak on, uh, which looks really cool. Um, so this is the first kind of chaplain all armor chaplain which I've managed to do, and I don't know whether I did a particularly good job at deciding what colours were what on the armor, but uh, hey. Maybe maybe that trim should have been silver as well to kind of match everything. Or maybe it should have been gold. Maybe I should have broken my rule and just started painting gold. Uh, a little bit heavy on the uh, the highlight there, just um, painting with the edge of the brush. So when you are doing edge highlights like this, if you do use the uh, the edge, so the further up the brush you use the edge, the heavier a mark you're going to get when you're doing the edge highlights. So if you use the edge right at the tip, that's not going to be holding as much paint so it won't blob for want of a better word it won't blob as much so you notice there when i went in and touched it barely did a mark um so if you want to really practice fine edge highlighting uh then try using the different um a, a different section of the brush when you're edge highlighting so rather than using like halfway up the body of the brush then use the tip of the brush or if you want to do like a chunky highlight use halfway up the brush halfway up the body and then for the finer highlight use the tip um, and then that will kind of help uh, develop that kind of um, edge highlight clarity and things so nice little nice little kind of tip to try around and play around with I think this is the parchment now yeah here we go so we've already done we did all the parchment uh, before we did the wash but then obviously we, we threw that black wash all over it the lamp black which settled nicely into the recess and gave it a little bit of a grungy look and now we're going to very like the brush strokes are much slower now as well when we're doing the lines we're trying to keep them very very light uh, we're, we're focusing on the top edge as well and uh, we're going in. I think. I think I've got a feeling this is screaming skull. It's, it's either screaming skull or it's or it's um, uh, the Carrick stone. Um, but uh, yeah, you can just kind of do these little lines, uh, and the brush strokes will build up on top of themselves, on top of themselves, and they will have that texture line. Um, it's, it's a really, really, really nice way of doing uh, grain work on like wood or anything like that as well. If you can kind of keep the 
brush brush marks in the same length, same same stroke uh, direction, uh, and then the same pressure as well, or even vary the pressure as well. So you, you will have noticed then uh, on some of the areas which I wanted to be a little bit darker, the the brush pressure was actually a little bit lighter, and there where I wanted a, a bit more of a uh, kind of a, a heavier mark, I, I, I pushed a little bit heavier, uh, a little bit harder with the brush, and uh, just kind of pushes the bristles out a little bit and just dumps a bit more paint down. Um, so yeah, clever way of kind of altering and varying the brush marks that you're getting on the model. And then the final little bit before we get to the really fun part is the lenses. So this is Mephiston Red. Uh, this is really simple. I'm not doing anything partial fancy with this. This is thin down Mephiston Red and I'm just going to flood the area so it kind of sinks into the recesses as well. And you'll see that kind of sinks in and then the because the whole helmet has been painted silver then the silver will repel a little bit of the paint and you'll see it kind of washes away there look and then we're just going to go back in with some Evil Sun Scarlet and then mix a little bit I think I had some ice yellow on my wet palette so I mix a little bit of ice yellow in uh, with the Evil Sun Scarlet and I apologize for the slightly out of focus um, but mix a little bit of ice yellow in with the Evil Sun Scarlet and then it will kind of push it towards the orange and slight, slightly pink and it will just kind of um, hint at uh, <laughs> I did get uh, a little bit of a touch on the shoulder uh, on the uh, cheek there uh, nice and slim, simply uh, cleaned off as you can see uh, and yeah it's just a little bit of ice yellow mixed in that will kind of then push it towards a uh, an orange as you can see here looks so there's a nice orange on the brush uh, orientate the eye lens within the uh, same orientation as the brush mark that you brush stroke that you're doing so we're going left to right there and we're going up to uh, up to down on the uh, on the other one a bit of a blob on the brush just clear that clean that off and then add it back in there we go and then you have a nice glowy we're not going to kind of go for anything else i wanted a glowy i don't want to do a lens where we've got a like a shine on here i wanted a bit more of a kind of a glowy feel on all these so uh, yeah it's just a, a little dot in there just to show that it's glowing on the inside ding 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 there we go sort of angry angry head okay now this is a proper angry head now uh so we've i've I uh, kind of suffered through the painting of the rest of the model uh, to and really enjoy this. I, I absolutely love painting all the all the possessed screaming skull faces <laughs> and everything on my dark pharaohs. It's so so much fun. Um, this has as well uh, had a quite a heavy kind of black wash over it. The uh, the oil wash that we put all over the model did get kind of gunked on this as well, so you can see it quite dark, uh, got quite a bit darker. And what we're doing on this is I'm trying to keep the skull dark as a whole and then really pick out and, and very much push the contrast and the highlights on this one. So the highlights on this we're going to take up to very nearly ivory. So we're taking Mephiston Red to start with uh, and then we have some Evil Sun Scarlet and then... The Evil Sun Scarlet has got uh, ice yellow mixed into it, uh, so same again, and uh, we're just kind of trying to find where it's going to be, or where we want the focus to be on this, and the skull on this is, like the focus is like, like I really want the focus around the forehead, the eyebrows, uh, and the eyes, and things like that, so we're kind of trying to push those up as far as we can. Um, if if I highlighted this too much it would go too bright and it would look too red and I wanted to look very dark but with some sort of ethereal quality that we don't quite know where it's coming from some sort of quality of um, like the, the possession is coming from from within something like that so it's literally just like the super 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 high contrast and the super high contrast comes from smaller and smaller dots like the impact uh, that these tiny dots have um, 
I, 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 it's like that tiny little dot there. This is like, <coughs> like these tiny little dots are like ivory with a tiny bit of uh, evil sun scarlet in it to almost make pink. So we're almost painting with 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 pink here. Uh, and normally, when you highlight red with pink, it it pulls the saturation away and it makes the red look pink. But because we're doing it in such a tiny dot, it has a different sort of impact, um, and it just makes it look. I love it. I just, I just think it makes it look really, really ethereal and really creepy and eerie. Um, so I, I'm just trying to find bumps, and uh, wherever there's a bump, I will just take it up to a tiny, tiny spot of pink um, for that highlight. Uh, and then the same with the teeth. We want the teeth to be like really, really bright, um, and the, the, like the, the tiny little dots here and there, just kind of pushing the contrast everywhere. It's really really fun to do this um, and it's it's also really really good um, if you want to do it with blue as well this works this this kind of same style of painting works really well with blue if you want to if you want to paint it kind of like a dark blue and then you can take the blue because blue is a different kind of temperature to red uh, you can take blue up to almost white um, I mean you can take red up to white as well but it would kind of desaturate just a little bit too far I think um, but yeah, this works. This works really, really well with blue as well. So if you want to work, kind of mix a uh, a dark blue up, cover the whole thing with a dark blue, and then kind of go through the uh, go through your blue um, range of highlights, uh, and just make sure you're keeping these kind of highlights very, very small, like tiny little dots on the teeth, things like that. It really pushes the contrast up. It looks great. I like it anyway let me know what you think and then th this obviously it um, it translates over to uh, all the other wisps as well all the other wisps get the same sort of treatment um not quite as aggressive so i don't tend to go up to pink on some of the uh some of the wisps i try to uh, try to keep reserve the pink for uh, like the screaming skulls and uh, things like that i've actually done a dante uh, with a screaming skull head which i really need to finish off um so dante for the for the dark pharaons uh, but uh, yeah i just i think it looks great I, I'm sorry, it's slightly out of focus. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see what's happening. You can see now that these final little dots out now are very, very close to kind of almost, almost white. Um, this is uh, like a so much uh, it's, it's basically ice yellow with like a tiny tiny bit of evil sun scarlet in it um just to kind of push it that that fraction into the red tone um, but uh, yeah there we go so that's 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 where that finished up at uh, and then just to finish it off just to finish the look off we're going to uh, glaze some red back in uh, just to soften down some of the marks a little bit so this is a, a glaze of uh, i think it's evil sun scarlet this one so a glaze of evil sun scarlet uh, and the glaze is something like uh four parts port four parts water to one part paint uh, it's really quite thin um and it's uh there's not a lot on the brush and we're just kind of trying to reinforce some of the some of the color lines on here uh, and because it's a glaze as well it will kind of hint at the red but then as it as it dries it kind of fades away as well and you lose that um, you lose that red punch that you get when you initially see it um on the model uh, when you when you it looks like you're initially putting it on and just dropping a couple of the highlights back in and then the final thing that we've got to do is uh, we're just going to try and make the eyes glow so we mixed in that that pink that we had the um ice yellow with the evil sun scarlet and uh, we're going to thin that down i'm going to put that uh, just kind of drop that into the eye sockets um, into the nose and then into the mouth as well and it just kind of finishes it off and, and uh, shows where that where this weird uh, possession is coming from uh, and where the light source as well for the uh, for the red is coming from as well it is coming from within the crozius and kind of exploding out uh, but uh, yeah that's that's the, uh, the the final little touch uh, which we'll get to in a second, I'm sure. So 
Oh, yeah, this, these glazes are just kind of soften the marks down as well. So all any mark that you make on the uh, on a model, uh, if you glaze it back and glaze it and glaze it and glaze it, so if you glaze over the transition of two colours, eventually that glaze will go completely smooth. That transition will go completely smooth. Um, so <clears throat> making like these these marks in here now. Uh, initially they were quite harsh and then glazing them back they kind of softened down a little bit and then here we go the final little touch at least I hope it is I've been hinting at it now for the last two minutes <laughs> uh, there's the, the, the final little touch uh, and then when you push this in you can manipulate I love it it looks so cool you can manipulate the uh, the drops a little bit to uh, to keep them at the back uh, and you can see they've got a tiny little kind of dark line around them so that's 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 because I didn't overfill it if you overfill the eye socket uh, then it will uh, it will obviously flood the whole eye socket and then you won't have that nice little dark edge around the the very very lip um, but uh, yeah there's the finished photo and uh, we did the base as well so the base was just a little bit of uh, Vallejo uh, texture paste and then it was painted with um, I think it was Mornfang Brown with a little bit of Rhinox Hide and then just some of the Rival Craft pigments uh, you can find those down in the description as well and um, some Rival Craft pigments just kind of smushed all over it just to dry it out uh, that's the basing scheme for my dark ferrons I try and keep them I try and keep this whole kind of Space Marine project army idea quite simple and quick I'm not trying to overthink anything like um, like the bases for instance so that's the finished look uh, the only thing that we didn't show in the video was the purity seals purity seals were uh, Galvor back red and then uh, Mephiston red and Evil Sun Scarlet so it just kind of pushes them a little bit uh, a little bit darker um, beyond uh, like the corn red and stuff um, but uh, yeah there we go thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i hope you enjoyed seeing the model uh, yeah, on the warhammer community page if you did uh, please let me know and uh, yeah it was really really cool having you along for this ride and uh, yeah thanks very much and please drop me a like and a subscribe you can find me on instagram as well it's at chris frost on instagram please go drop over there i'm closing in on 10,000 um, 10, followers on instagram now which is amazing so please go drop a follow over there that'd be fantastic and you can find me on twitch uh, at the moment i'm streaming pretty much every day of the week so it's twitch.tv forward slash chris frosting come and say hello and uh, say that you come over from youtube that would be amazing and uh, you can find me on twitter um, or x or whatever it is and, and all the other places are at chris frostman as well and uh, thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time take care bye, -bye.